Hey guys, I really appreciate you joining me here. I'm going to be talking about one of my paintings called The Sistine Lion. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about Michelangelo, one of my favorite artists that inspired this painting. And some of the process that went into it and what it means and why it's so important to me. So, by the way, if you have any questions or comments, I'd be really excited to hear from you guys so please post them in the comments box below the video um, I'm just getting started here on my YouTube channel so any feedback would be really exciting so Sistine Lion I made this painting about two years ago 2020 and it's very much inspired by Michelangelo as I said so let's take a quick look here at the painting that inspired me here he is this is the prophet Isaiah from the Sistine Chapel in Rome. So Michelangelo, as many of you know, is uh, one of the titans of Renaissance art. Um, one of the most famous artists of all time in the Western world. And he's one of my favorite artists. So his figures, they're just really epic. They have this musculature and just rhythm and the contours that has always attracted me to his style. And something about the awesomeness is just so potent that I really resonate with. So I do a lot of sketching. This is one of my favorite figures. So I made this sketch in one of my sketchbooks. And I started with the figure and just more or less copied Isaiah. The sketch is about, let's say, 10 inches tall or so. And I love sketching. I do it all the time. And it just gives us so much freedom to experiment and explore ideas because most sketchbooks they're at a pretty small scale it's not necessarily created for an audience and we can explore things you know just explore mark making on the page explore different interests and sources of inspiration so I just love to draw so one day I was looking at Isaiah and I decided to sketch him so here he is and then behind him as we can see I put the lion and as if you're familiar with many of my other paintings, I love drawing and painting lions. So they show up a lot. In profile here, I, I put it in there with kind of this smoky substance billowing out of its mouth. And something about this sketch just really struck me as opening a gateway or a doorway to some potent vision. So I decided to take it further and render it into a full-scale painting. Before we get into the painting, I just want to comment on one other aspect here of incorporating the work of other artists. So here we can see Isaiah on the right, and this is a painting by Norman Rockwell, uh, painted in the 1940s, I believe, in the World War II era, when a lot of women were empowered to fulfill some of the roles traditionally reserved for men working in factories, and this is called Rosie the Riveter by Norman Rockwell. So we can see he's clearly leaning on Michelangelo's figure and people familiar with the Sistine Chapel, which has been one of the most famous paintings of all time. So many people were familiar. They would recognize the posture in his work. Um, but many people would not also. And I'm not sure where Rockwell stood as far as being openly expressing that he was referring to Isaiah. Uh, I haven't done the research there. But we can clearly see he's taking something out of art history and reusing it for his own purpose. So this is the, the, how explicit he was. It's kind of ambiguous as far as did he want his audience to know this was a Michelangelo work or he didn't care. It's, I'm not sure. So for my work, it's fairly important to me for viewers to know that this is coming from Michelangelo in the Sistine ceiling. There's just so much rich history and, you know, perspectives and experience that people have seeing the Sistine ceiling or reproductions of it. And so I want that to kind of inform and play off of what I'm doing in this painting. So I copied more or less uh, in a high level of detail the figure, the flow of the robes and the composition of the figure himself. Um, the colors are different, the sheen on the surface of the material is different. So past a certain threshold, 
I felt inspired to start to bring in something of my own vision that I was starting to see. It's kind of like uh, handing the baton past a certain threshold, you know, using Michelangelo's work and then taking it into a new realm. So that's what I did. And then clearly everything else around him is my own vision, my own inspiration. So what does it mean? Um, I definitely will let the painting speak for itself at that point. Um, but there's something about the feel and the epic quality of the space and the, the rolling clouds and the tremendous lion behind him that, that kind of points in the direction of what it means to me. So I kind of look at Michelangelo's rendering of Isaiah in the Sistine Ceiling is that let's say we're looking at Isaiah in the original painting as where he is and what he's doing. He's sitting in the throne. He's among all the other prophets. There's so much going on in the Sistine Ceiling, and that's where he is externally. Whereas when I look at my painting, this is kind of what I actually perceive Isaiah is experiencing within. In other words, when we look at Michelangelo's Isaiah, what is he thinking about? What's he contemplating here? What did he just read in the, the sacred text? And this is, in a way, my answer to that question. Within, he's perceiving this experience of this vast space, something about the cloud, the dark clouds, and the lion, and the, the, all the meaning associated with the lion. This is kind of his internal, actual experience that Michelangelo began in his painting. So that's one way to look at it that's really inspiring for me and just ignites my imagination when I look at this painting. So let's look at a few more pictures um, related to Michelangelo and his influence on my work. So here's a sketch I did of David. So this is one of his early definitive sculptural masterpieces um, in Florence, Italy. This sketch is from his sculpture of Lorenzo de Medici. This is in Rome. I just love his figures. They are just have this heroic, epic quality that I'm sure has resonated with so many other artists and, you know, just people who appreciate his work. I would like to share with you guys one more of my paintings that's been inspired by Michelangelo. This is called The Infinity King. As we could see, it's my own unique composition and figure and um, idea. And I did a lot of research in terms of sketching and reading about Michelangelo's work going into this painting. So if we look back at Lorenzo here, and you see his position of his legs and his posture, it's definitely informed my creation of the Infinity King. And also, if you're familiar with his Moses sculpture, the beard is also inspired by that work of Michelangelo's. So that's something that artists do that that we definitely do a lot is we can refer to our inspiration from other artists and eventually we get to a point where we can create our own work that's been subconsciously or in, or consciously informed by other artists but we create our own work moving forward so that's what i did here with the infinity king um and just kind of a side note but i think it's also really important this halo surrounding the infinity king so Michelangelo, in a way, is, is very much a representative of Western art. He was the cul culmination of Renaissance realizations and humanism and things like that. And in this painting, um, so I'm leaning on the Western tradition through Michelangelo, but I'm also bringing in this Middle Eastern Islamic motif in the halo. So this design I created after studying a little bit of the principles of Islamic geometry. So this kind of bridge building between different cultures and different traditions is something that artists can do that's such a rich and fertile ground for inspiration and revelation. I think it's one of the most inspiring things for me is to lean on so many different cultures and bring that through my own creative ideas and vision and just intuitive sense into new forms and new associations between these different lineages. So that's what the Infinity King here represents. And that's kind of the foothold that Michelangelo has given me in a sense 
is such a strong representation of the Western tradition and how I can infuse that with other traditions too. So again, I appreciate you guys who stuck around and, and enjoyed the video. I hope this was inspirational and I would love to hear from you. So at the time of this recording, I'm pretty early on in my YouTube channel. So any comments or feedback you guys have, please put them in the comments. I'll definitely be checking regularly. My intention is to put out one of these videos at least once a week. Um, I'm really enjoying it and I'm sure I will more when I hear from you guys. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again.